even as GM technology took over. Monsanto said it was surprised by the extent of the decline found by the Kansas study. They said that the soya had not been engineered to increase yields and that it was now developing one that would. Also in the news this week, the bin police are in force. Police chiefs ordered bin men to act as spies by shifting through rubbish to look for pamphlets produced by Islamic terrorist groups. Town halls responsible for areas with large Muslim populations were summoned to London. They were told to get their refuge collectors to search bins for discarded documents or material that might identify and incriminate Islamic extremists. The Mail on Sunday found out that the instruction was issued at a secretive summit hosted by the Department of Communities and Local Government, attended by ministers and Handy Heyman, who at the time was Britain's top anti-terror policeman and an assistant commissioner for the Metropolitan Police. The bin police have also been fining thousands of families for putting their bins out on the wrong day. The fixed penalty charges higher than those given to shoplifters have been brought in under new laws. Also families are being fined and given criminal records for overfilling their wheelie bins. Enforcement officers are turning up on people's doorsteps wearing stab vests and reading them their rights and issuing them with on the spot fines. Minnesota is also in the news this week. The state has advanced a plan to own the DNA of newborns, preserving it in a warehouse for the use in genetic research, experimentation, manipulation and profiling, according to an advocacy organisation seeking to protect the privacy of the individual information. If this bill becomes law, each year 73,000 newborn citizens will not be protected by the state genetic privacy law. In Minnesota, the state's genetic privacy law was challenged by the Department of Health, which lost a court battle over the issue. They have already stockpiled the DNA of more than 780,000 children and has already subjected the DNA of 42,000 children to research without their consent or knowledge. Similar laws and rules and regulations already are in use across the nation. In Britain police are to launch military style spy planes. Military technology developed to track the Taliban in Afghanistan will de be deployed in England to spot smugglers, stolen cars and even illegal immigrants arriving by sea. Police forces in Kent and Essex have begun a development project with BAE Systems, Europe's largest defence company, to make unmanned aerial vehicles as part of their arsenals. Police commanders hope that such a military grade equipment will be capable of automatically detecting crimes from the air and then directing ground forces to investigate them. A number of police forces, including Merseyside and Strathclyde, have already developed remote-controlled aircraft to spy in the sky. They are used, typically, to monitor crime scenes and can be programmed to operate within a certain area using GPS navigation. Wales is back in the news this week. Another teenager has been found dead in Bridgend. The 19-year-old was found hanging by his family after going missing on a night out with friends. He is the 19th person to have taken their own lives in the country of Bridgend since the beginning of 2007. A special task force is investigating the cases. The task force, which includes police, children's services and mental health experts, is examining dozens of copycat suicides by young people in Bridgend since 2004. Philip Walters, the coroner for the town of Bridgend, has launched an investigation into the link between the internet and the suicides. He said he was desperately concerned 
about the chain of young suicides and of the connection to teenage social network sites such as Bebo and MySpace. He said he wants to warn youngsters about the possible dangers these websites can pose. Now for some technology news. Travellers at New York and Los Angeles airports will be among the first in the world to be searched using a new scanner which can see through clothes. The millimetre wave imaging technology which begins trials this week creates a picture of the body which critics say amounts to a virtual strip search. The US Transportation Security Administration plans to buy at least 30 of the devices but the first machines are being used in Los Angeles and J.F. Kennedy's airport. Security officials say it can show contours of the body and can pick up hidden items such as guns or knives. Security staff in a separate room will examine the image. Officials say this distance protects a person's privacy because apart from the image they are unable to see the people being examined as the faces are blared. Passengers may choose not to go through the scanner but will then be subject to other screening including pat down searches. There is also some more airport technology. A Canadian company called Lampard Less Lethal is promoting a safety bracelet. It is equipped with electromuscular distribution technology which effectively short circuits the central nervous system. Zap someone and they will be completely immobile for several minutes. When passengers are issued their tickets they will also be fitted with an electronic RD bracelet that they will wear on their wrists until they disembark the aeroplane. They say the bracelets will be convenient because you don't have to carry a ticket with you and that all your luggage can be coded to match the bracelet so your luggage won't be lost. And with the bracelet also being fitted with electromuscular distribution. The bracelets will allow crew members using radio frequency transmitters to quickly subdue hijackers on a plane. Also in the news this week, Bionic Eye allows blind people to see. Two blind patients have had revolutionary surgery involving the implantation of a bionic eye to help them see. The experimental surgery was carried out at Moorfields Eye Hospital in London last week as part of an international trial of new techniques involving 15 patients in five countries. The two patients operated on at Moorfields were fitted with a pair of glasses carrying a tiny camera and transmitter which sends a signal to an ultra-thin electronic receiver inserted into the back of the eye attached to the retina. Images picked up by the camera and transmitted to the receiver stimulates the remaining healthy nerves in the retina, sending a signal via the optic nerve to the brain. If the device works properly, it could help people suffering from severe blindness of any cause, providing their optic nerve was still functioning. The US inventor of the device is hoping to shrink the camera so it will alternately be small enough to fit within the eyeball itself. And that's the news in brief for this week. I'm Mike Eastwood and thank you for listening. And for more news, check out the news on the edge. News reports are posted daily. <laughs> Before my eyes, sometimes in disguise, and sometimes I rise, becoming so wise. And all I take is someone who always tries for everyone who cries, and those living fear, shedding a tear. Oh, listen here, oh, listen here, and listen clear, show no fear. Rise in horizon for treason